Hi, I'm Daria Brzezinski, Executive Director of What Wise Women Want, here on Charlottesville's Public Access, Comcast Channel 13. Each week, we're going to bring you programming, according to our motto, encouraging women's voices to make informed choices. Now, what that means is that you have the power, by your purchasing power, and we have 85% of it, to make choices in what it is that you do to make this a better world for yourself and your children. We are 52% of the population and the majority. So what we do can really make a difference for ourselves and the lives of our children and our community and our world at large. Each week we'll be bringing you topics that I think will be interesting to you with a group of women who we'll be talking about. And some of them are experts, some of them aren't. But we hope to have great conversation and informing you to make informed choices. Today on our show, we'll be discussing what are the essential skills women need in life and in their careers. We have an amazing group of women, and I apologize for reading, but they have such vast bi uh, biologies and biographies that it would take me forever just to memorize them. So I'm going to read them to you. On my right is Cynthia Murray, thought leader, author, professional speaker, attorney, and the founder of Cynthia Murray Enterprises, an international success and leadership development company through which she trains and coaches organizational teams and individual leaders to function at peak performance. Cynthia is also an author of Seasons of Change, Surviving and Thriving During Life's Biggest Challenges, as well as a new book coming out, The Power of a Plan, 10 Keys to Achieving Your Goals and Winning. Cynthia also has worked as a senior business management professor, professional for a major Fortune 500 defense company. She's also been the Assistant Commonwealth's Attorney in the state of Virginia. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you, Daria. Angela, call it Cotel Cotalesa. <laughs> Cotalesa mm -hmm. grew up in San Francisco Bay Area and attended college and graduate school at the University of Southern California. She holds two bachelor's degree, one in science and one in communications, as well as a master's degree in communication management. While living in Los Angeles, Angela spent several years working at a shelter for battered women and their children. During her time as a student, she held internships both for the California Governor's Office as well as the White House. She is later hired as the Executive Office of the President as a non-political career federal employee. Her six-year tenure started under the Bush administration and lasted throughout President Obama's first term. While working it there, she was put into the Executive Leadership Program for up-and-coming government professionals, which led her to come to the State Department at the American Embassy in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Today, she's at the Federal Executive Institute in Charlottesville, Virginia, where she trains senior executives in service, the federal government's most prestigious and elite group of career civil servants. She's also an amazing, she also has a private company uh, with her grandparents who raised her in real estate and an investment company. And she enjoys riding her motorcycle and trying adventurous activities along with her. She's now a newlywed, mm -hmm. moving to Charlottesville with her husband. Bevan Chetta Boisvert mm -hmm. surpasses adversaries in life uh, by raising two young daughters by herself as a single mother. Bevan's spirit pushed her to overcome all of her obstacles and eventually starting her own business. Pulling her knowledge gained from 10 years experience in real estate and marketing and sales, she enthusiastically took on the challenge starting her own business in the same way she took on every other challenge in her life. With these valuable tools, and many of us know her in Charlottesville, she also is joined with her husband, David. She was raised by an architectural father in the UVA community and grew up with a respective role model who managed the family business, teaching her skills along the way that ultimately contributed to the success of her own current businesses. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Bevan loved for giving back and returning to the community. 
because she's a member of many volunteer organizations, which I've seen her, the Design House Committee, and the Shelter for the Health and Emergency. She's definitely a self-sufficient self-starter, is an on-the-spot person, knew how to capture niches in the, in the market, and is fearless when asking questions. Michelle Braden is CEO of MSB Coach, an ICF certified business. She has coached and trained leaders and teams for more than 18 years. She's a certified coach and adjunct faculty member of the Center for Creative Leadership. She received her Advanced Human Behavior Certification and Wellness Coaching Certification from the Leadership Institute of America. She's an Advanced Certified Associate of Emergetics International, a TED Certified Coach, and served as a panelist for the World Coaching Conference. She's worked with Federal Reserve Bank, Darden, Morgan Keenan, Capital One, the University of Virginia, General Dynamics, LexisNexis, and she's coached and served positions in corporations like Rudolph Half International and the Retirement Unlimited Corporation. She too is an author of books such as, three of them, Stand Out, 33 Daily Reflections to Build Positive Habits for Personal Leadership, Development, Dare to Make a Difference, 33 Daily Reflections to Build Effective Habits While Teaching Others, and The Bottom Line, 33 Daily Reflections to Build Successful Habits with Leading Results. Oh my goodness, and plus she also has a blog. Well, <laughs> that was a mouthful. Now, let's start and just, you know, in general, helping women. Um, you all have taught leadership in every facet here in many different forms. And I'm wondering, what kinds of skills do you see women needing in terms of leadership? And I'm talking, let's talk for, for a while about leadership in terms of their careers. What do you think women need to develop in terms of leadership skills? Michelle, would you like to start? You know, Daria, that's a good question because there are such skills that we need in leadership in general, whether we're male or female. But if we're looking just at women, um, from my work with women and being a woman myself, one of the things that I have really observed is development of the executive presence. For women to feel confident in who they are and that executive presence from capturing trust and um, what we call owning a room when they walk in. And there's a difference between kicking the door down and, and having the confidence of knowing how to open the door. Okay. So can you do me a favor and give us an example of kind of what that looks like? Because I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And often we women cower, especially in the presence of men. So what does that look like? Not... Is it the difference between aggressive and assertive? Is that what you're talking about? You know, there is, is definitely an, a difference between the two of those because it's one thing to be assertive. And sometimes as women, and, and depending on where you were raised and how you were raised, you may feel like there is something wrong with that, with asserting yourself. And being assertive in what it is that we do is important for women to be able to do that because knowing that when you walk into a room, people are looking at you or looking to you and how do they respond in that versus being too forceful with your words or, or even your presence. I know a lot of times in our coaching, we will tell people with their physical presence, you need to step down some with your physical presence alone. And oftentimes people will say, well, what do you mean? And that's the difference between being assertive and aggressive. If you're in somebody's face like this, even unintentionally, and you're not saying anything, it may cause them to feel uncertain. But, but listening and leaning back, but still holding your space is what we call assertiveness and owning your executive presence. Yes. And I see that a lot in women, the uncomfortableness in that. And I think because possibly the way that they were raised in as, as young girls, they weren't taught that ownership of their own physical body and space. Yeah. Bevan, you, I have told you many times, so this is not a secret to you, um, Bevan is kind of my poster person um, for people. Uh, Bevan did not graduate from, Bevan graduated from high school, but has, does not have a college degree. And yet, if it's okay, um, she is a dynamic woman and has, for most of her adult life, had a six-figure income. 
So what is it about the characteristics that you have in terms of leadership or what is it about you that um, you can help other women mm -hmm. who, um, and I'm not saying for everybody not to get a college education, right, but I'm saying that you know everybody has potential. So what is it about you and in terms of your leadership and your ability that you'd like to convey to women? Definitely drive and determination. I say there's no grass between these toes. <laughs> um, luckily, years ago in my early 20s, I was going to a community college up in Santa Cruz, California, trying to figure out what I wanted to be. Um, at that time, I walked into a model home and found a wonderful career. Applied for a job in a model home, a new home builder, found a wonderful career there, which took me off. I was born with a family, my father being an architect and home builder. I didn't. And I, um, so I was around that environment, and luckily, while I was still searching for myself while in City College, I found a career path that would allow me to make a six-figure income without having a college degree. So I worked my way up the ladder and um, became quite successful in new home sales. So it's finding that niche, something you love. Maybe it'd be photography, flowers, children, finding it and just going with it and learning everything you can about it and being an expert at it is what they would say. Knowing what the competition's doing, knowing everything around you um, that helps you gain that confidence so you feel better at your career that you've chosen. Um, but there's definitely something to be said for a college degree and maybe I wish I had had one, but I didn't. I chose a different path and it worked out very well for me. Excellent. Angela, yes. it must be really interesting to train executives in the government. I mean, in my, and of course I don't know because I, you know, I'm not in that capacity, but it would seem to me that the government attracts all kinds of people, you know, from um, the well-educated to the not so well-educated mm -hmm. as it is in our Congress and in our, our Senate, I'm sure. It's representative in terms of government employees. What kinds of skills do you teach people? Um, you have such a diverse audience that there must be some characteristics or some, some particular skills that you teach you know, to a wide uh, area of people. Yeah, I mean, um, we do teach skills like business acumen, enterprise leadership, leading people, leading change. There are, I mean, the Office of Personnel Management has 26 um, executive core qualifications that we teach. But in my observation, the theme that seems to come up the most from very senior executives is that once you get to a certain level, the skill that you tend to use the most is your people skills, to be honest. And, I, and I, I'm sure we all can remember a bad leader who did not have people skills and they just aren't very effective. So if you are a leader, essentially what you are is you are leading people. You are accomplishing a group effort through other people. And so if you want to manage other people, what you need is people skills. And I think a lot of what it comes down to is teach, treating other people like you would like to be treated. You want to be treated with respect. You want to be treated like you matter. You want to be treated like your work matters. So I think ultimately the people who tend to be the best leaders are the ones who know how to work with people effectively. Well, this is really good. So how do you teach people people skills? I mean, can you teach? That's the question. That's a good question. Can you teach people people <laughs> skills? I mean, oh. Bevan here seems to have it, you know, in spades internally. So can you teach it? I think generally people um, have certain strengths that they're born with, but you can try to develop those skills further in people, even if it wasn't a natural skill. So like you can teach someone to be an active listener. Like there are actual skills, like repeating what the person just said to right. show that you understand what they just communicated to you. Or, I mean, I really think a very effective tool and often overlooked is showing genuine appreciation, whether for something big or something small. If you say, I noticed what you did and it mattered to me and I thank you, that makes a big difference. And you know what it does? It's so strategic. It makes them want to give you more good work. If you acknowledge what they did well, they want to do more of that for you. Excellent. So, so you to know, answer your question, I think people are born with certain strengths, but you can 
work to develop them further. You know, and each one of you is talking about leadership and career, but these are all individual kinds of skills we need, whether we're mothers or wives or, you know, mm -hmm. not just in business or, you know, leadership in terms of, of career, but it's also, you know, everyday kinds of skills. Cynthia, um, what kinds of, uh, in your leadership training, what kind of um, skill sets do you t train people? Well, leadership is very important to me, and part of, I think, my success to this point has been due to great leaders that I've had. How do you define life. leadership? Well, uh, I define it a lot by character. Um, certainly, as uh, was just stated, a leader is someone who's galvanizing a group of people to have a positive effect and outcome to achieve a desired goal. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's much more to leadership than just getting a group of people to do something. There are gang members on the street that can lead somebody to do something. Yep, yep, yep. It's more about the character that's inside of the leader that you impart to the people mm -hmm. that you're leading that causes them to grow, develop, and to become productive members of the community. Right. And so the skills that I teach um, have to do not only with listening and being an active listener, a participant, being compassionate, understanding the people that you lead. That's very important because it's not just about you. You may have a title, you may have a high position as a leader. That's typically how, how part of the definition is of a leader. Um, but as a leader, a good leader has to understand that it's not just about them. It's about the people that they lead, about giving them the tools, the skills that they need to raise up. And ultimately, the best leader wants to have a legacy so that they can step aside and raise up another leader to come in and then take that place. Interesting. Wow. It sounds to me like, you know, the kinds of skills you're talking about are not just, you know, the technical kinds of skills you would think in some, you know, conference or something like that, but everyday skills that, so how do you bring these, the things that you do? Now, each one of you has varying degrees of relationships. Uh, Bevan has two daughters and is married. You're just married. You are married as well and, and have children. So you're a single mom single. And so how do you bring how do you bring what you have in terms of, you know, this is your personal life now. We're not going to be teaching people here. So how how do you keep balanced? How do you keep balanced with family and career and, you know, all the things that you do because all of you are really high powered, high energy kinds of people. Michelle, how do you keep balanced? Well, for me, I'm in a different place right now. I'm an empty nester for the first time. Um, my youngest is 20. So looking back at the balance then, but still having to have balance now, even as, as an empty nester and someone that's very driven in their work and recognizing that there is a time to leave the phone in the car and, and there is time for date night and there is a time to turn the laptop off. Um, and I think a big part of it, first of all, is for us as women, for me personally, to know what it is I want. And then I have to create those own boundaries for myself because that saying you can have it all, I personally am not a believer in that. You cannot have it all. There, there are way too many things. You have to make choices. And different times in our life, we make different choices. And so learning when to say no, there's a time to say no, and there's a time to say not now, maybe later. Um, and, and really knowing when to unplug, which is hard because the truth is the emails are never going to stop coming yep, yep, in. Yep. Um, there's never going to stop being a, a demand for something. But if we don't stop and take the time to rest and take care of ourselves and, and be with family, then all of a sudden we, we are way out of balance and we're not nearly as good at any one thing anymore because we're so out of whack. And I know that for myself, that I know when I start running on empty, I'm not good at anything anymore. You know, for my generation of women, we were told you, you could have it all. You could do everything. And I was one of those single moms. So, and running a business and everything else. And I can honestly tell you, you cannot have it all. Mm -hmm. And ironically, that's one of the titles of topics of the next program we're going to have. But ladies, jump in. You know, how, how do you balance your life? Anybody? Um, I have a hard time sometimes. I, I, I'm a leader outside and in the business world, and I'm definitely one at home. So it's hard to um, step back sometimes. My family will definitely tell you that. So I have interest in hobbies that I do. I love yoga. 
I garden. I'll, mommy, go take a walk. <laughs> and I'll just step, <clears throat> excuse me, just step back and <clears throat> reflect and step away from the chaos of everyday life and make some time for myself. I love it that you said that because having fun, I think, is such an important part. We forget, especially as professional women, yes. we forget to have fun. fun. Yes. Oh, I love having fun. I entertain all the time. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful deck and backyard. I love to entertain and family's close by and that's a uh, big part. So it's like yeah. my little mini vacation where the phone goes away. I cook a big meal. We sit and look at the trees and out on the deck and enjoy each other's company. Mm. Priceless. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Priceless. Exactly. We have a sign and hanging in our kitchen that says having it all doesn't mean having it all at the same time. Right. And I think that's really important to remember. A lot of times we just want to have so much. We want this, we want that, and we want it now. But I think it's important to, you know, think of your life. It will last decades long. At the end of your life, what do you want to have accomplished? What do you want to have been your priority? Hmm. You know, I think a lot of people by just instinct end up putting a lot of their energy into their career, which is important. But, you know, family and self-care is also important. You know, they say on the airplane, if, if something's going down, you know, you got to put the air mask on yourself. Right. And I think that's very true with how, um, how real life is. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are exhausted, you don't do self care, you don't have fun, then what kind of work product are you going to deliver in the office? What kind of mother or wife or sister or friend are you going to be? I think it's really important to do self care, have, have priorities, have a plan, be organized, do what you can, but also don't beat yourself up if you feel like you can't have it all at the same time right now. Well, I came from a generation of women where it's amazing to me, but we, you know, did, we were very, it's very different. It was all about doing the family, working, you know, and fun wasn't a part of the, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, mm -hmm. formula. Yeah. So it's wonderful to hear, you know, you, you all talk about these kinds of things. Absolutely. For me, I think uh, prioritization is key. And because when your life is out of balance, you feel it just as though you had some type of misalignment in your back and you need to get adjusted by a chiropractor. It's the same thing in your life and in your relationships. You will feel an out of balance. There will be something that's out of kilter inside. And you'll, the key is to recognize it and not to just let that yellow flag go up and ignore it because the problem will only get worse. Mm -hmm. If you know what your priorities are, family, uh, community, faith, work, and you have all of these things in one kind of pie mm -hmm. that you have created that is your life. Um, you have to be self-reflective and say, I've spent a lot of time over here, but I tend to have neglected this aspect of my life. I need to now refocus and spend some time in this area. Balance is a really hard thing to do. It I mean, is. you're all talking about boundaries, you know, each of, to have boundaries in these different things, yeah. your personal life, your family life, mm -hmm. your children, your, you know, your career. How do, you, how do you strike that balance, though? I mean, you just said, you know, if you, this is waning, then you need to come over here. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the hard part, especially if you're getting a job nine to five or sure. you have a career or, mm -hmm. you know, your own business or, mm -hmm. you know, how do you, how do you achieve that balance? What do you, I mean, is it always constantly in your head or how do you do that? I don't know. I'm asking you. I'm asking I a, you. I have a thought on that because I am a firm believer for me, balance is not something that I've achieved. It's just like life and leadership and it's a journey and it's something that we're constantly monitoring and navigating and just about the time you get it figured out you have a parent who gets ill and then you think you have it figured out and you found out you're pregnant at 45 and you know and so these you know life just has a way of throwing you these curveballs and so it, it is an evaluation and a looking at where am I and what's happening. But I think when we know our values and we're true in our core and playing off Cynthia, what you said of whether those values are your, your faith based, um, your, your, your morals, your, your health, um, your family, knowing what those things are, that this is my core. And so no matter what's going on, I always come back to my core. Mm -hmm. And how do I bring this into alignment despite what's going on out here around me? Because life will throw you those balls. It reminds me of an airplane. You know, everybody thinks that an airplane flies straight. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, it's flying like this all the time. It's correcting all the time. So that's kind of like life. So. Right. One of the things I think is really important is that self-reflection, but it requires a peacefulness. Mm. We're going constantly. We're doing constantly. There are 
always um, things coming at us, whether it's a cell phone call, whether it's an email, whether it's someone knocking at the front door. And there is this temptation to always be on, to always be responsive Mm -hmm. to all of those stimuli. It's very, very important in order to maintain balance, to have a time where you are literally down. I call it unplugged. Mm. You need to settle yourself Mm. to be able to even hear your own thoughts. Mm. And you'd be surprised at how wonderful those thoughts are. We just aren't taking enough time to settle to hear them. You know, I think we're trained to listen to everything outside of ourselves before we're taught to listen to inside of ourselves. I I wanted to add to this concept of self-leadership. You've been asking us a bit about leadership of other people, but I think you can also be a leader of yourself. You can have an awareness of your parts and your demands and your needs and your emotions and be the orchestrator of yourself almost like you would of a team of employees reporting to you. you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Definitely. All right, if you could talk to a younger version of yourself, what advice would you have given? Anybody? I'm laughing because it was just what we talked about, uh, and it's what I would still say to myself, and that is, Michelle, have more fun. Life is short. Enjoy your family more. So that challenge that I had when I was younger, I still, my... My daughter will be talking to me and she'll say, could you put your phone down for just a minute? And then I'm, I'm kicking myself because I know this. I learned this already. Why am I repeating it? So mm-hmm. have, have more fun. And I love what you said that you can actually unplug and get out there. I would still be checking the box. Okay, are all the cheese cubes perfect? Um, <laughs> is, that, is the ice melting? I, as I would forget to have the fun. So I love it. Thank you for that reminder. Well, uh, very good about delegating too. <laughs> You have to delegate, yeah. right? So my daughter's clear the table, yes. bring me some more vino. <laughs> right? Um, but uh, the young child, the you version, know, yeah. The version of the young child yeah. is to take everything somewhat with a grain of salt. Sometimes I take things very seriously. And and my daughters will so tell me, Mom, you already said that or I already did that and just you know, sit back and so when I was driving here tonight, I'm like, I don't need to repeat that. You know, so they heard it the first time. You let them, you got to choose your battles. Mm-hmm. And that's a battle sometimes you just don't need to choose. And mm-hmm. just kind of, uh, hopefully you give that information out. They listen to it and you pray to God that they do what you ask. And if not, you know, come back. But just listening to uh, them and choosing your battles and, figuring out what's worth fighting for and what's worth not fighting for. What would you tell a younger version of yourself? I think I would tell the younger version of myself, I would remind her that things happen for a reason and that all the difficulties Mm -hmm. she's gone through will make her better, stronger, wiser, and a better person to help others. And that it'll all be okay and you'll have a wonderful life and things (laughs) will turn out really great. (laughs) So, so... You know, a lot of times women give up or many women go to drugs or, you know, all, all kinds of other things when things get tough. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I don't think anybody here takes that way out. I mean, it seems to me that you all, you know, are moved through or one thing I learned as a psychologist, uh, when you have a fear, move through it mm-hmm. instead of retreating from it. Right. Mm-hmm. So, right. Cynthia, what would you tell the younger version of yourself? I loved that question. Mm -hmm. I loved that question. Um, And I really gave that a lot of thought. I would tell the younger version of myself, stop being so um, dependent upon the opinions of others Mm -hmm. and be yourself. Ah, yes, 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 yes. And those are things, you know, growing up that I don't know about your experiences, but mine, that was something that I struggled with and being so concerned about the opinions of others. Not that you should just you know, not care about what others think of you. You want to have a nice reputation mm-hmm. and, and to be a, um, someone that people think highly of and pe- that people think well of. But I'm talking about that kind of uber concern yeah. yep. of um, um, self-judgment sometimes can mm-hmm. even turn into self-condemnation because yep. you're so worried about um, perfection and not being perfect and not measuring up mm-hmm. or she has more of this skill, right, more right, of this right. talent, more of this whatever um, than I do. And just just resting in the fact that you're just perfect the way you are. Yep. There's a lot of growth and a lot of maturity that life will bring. Just enjoy the journey. Yep. 
I'd like to remind everybody you're watching What Wise Women Want on Charlottesville's Public Access Comcast Channel 13. And we're here today with four amazing women. We have Cynthia Murray to my right, Angela Cotalesa, Bevan Chetta Boisvert, and Michelle Braden. And we're talking about uh, the question for today has been, what are the essential skills women need for life and in their careers? And it seems like they dovetail from our conversation all over the place. Now, I'd like to ask you, what, if you have any, woman inspired you? Do you have a woman who inspired you? Absolutely. It's my mother. And um, I don't mean that at all to sound cliche, but um, she is an extraordinary woman. And the older I get, the more I appreciate her. The more I appreciate her wisdom. I appreciate her fortitude. I appreciate her grace. I appreciate her um, wisdom for life circumstances. And I watched her uh, during a very challenging time in our family when my father, uh, without any w warning, suffered a massive stroke. Mm -hmm. And um, while he did live several years after that, he was not able to walk, not able to speak. And my mother became a nurse and she took care of him. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't anything really that he could do for her in the sense of, you know, the, the fellowship, the, uh, the financial support, nothing. All of that was gone. And I saw her roll up her sleeves and love her husband until death did they part. Mm -hmm. She got up early. She stayed up late. She never complained. If I can have a portion and a fraction of that kind of strength and fortitude, I think I'll turn out all right. Sounds like you really cared about her. Mm -hmm. Angela, I know who your favorite uh, person is. My hero is without a doubt my grandmother who raised me and who I consider one of my soulmates. I might cry. Um, she was my best friend. She passed away 10 years ago, but had such a strong impact mm -hmm. on my, my life. Um, she helped me believe in me which I think is the single best gift anyone could have ever given me in the entire world. I mean, my belief in myself made so many things possible. I applied for a White House internship, and you know what, I got it too. And I got a job there, and I've traveled the world, and I've had all these incredible experiences because I had the guts and the backbone to take risk. And the reason I have that in me is because my grandmother, she told me, she told me I'm the cream of the cream. She had, I mean, she oozed love and confidence at me 24-7, and it really impacted me tremendously. And I think this, these examples that we've shared so far really show that you can be a hero. It doesn't matter if your name is in lights or if you're in the newspaper yeah. or if, if you're a celebrity. You can make an impact on the people around you, and your legacy will live on through them. Mm -hmm. So never underestimate the importance of being loving and dedicated and a good friend and a pillar mm -hmm. for others in moments of need because it really does matter. Absolutely, absolutely. Bevan, do you have a woman who's inspired you? Um, I would say my mother as well, who I'm named after. My mother's Bevan Chetta, and they live here in Charlottesville with my father, Vito. And she just loves me unconditionally, just like her mother does. And Lord knows I've fallen on my face many a time and pick myself up, and she just still loves me and bites her tongue. Sometimes she speaks her mind, and I appreciate it and get a little uh, advice from her, and then I take it with a grain of salt, and then <laughs> maybe I have to bite my tongue. And, but it's uh, the two Bevins have it going on, and um, <laughs> I named my daughter after my twin daughters. One's named after my mother as well, her middle name. We took that. and. Um, so just loving me unconditionally and watching out for me and, and being there for me. And that's the reason why we moved back to Charlottesville, to be back closer to our parents, mm. my parents. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. I volunteer with my mom at Twice as Nice every week, and that's a really nice time to help each other out and help the community and help the store and the Bev and the Bevan team. So um, I enjoy having her around. Excellent. Thank you. Michelle, do you have a 
Well, I really did have my mother written down. I'm not just <laughs> I'm not just jumping in on the bandwagon. So it's wonderful to know for all of us that family members were so close and influential to us. Um, for me, my mom is a counselor. She's an ordained minister, and she's been a police wow. chaplain. Um, and she still is just one of the coolest ladies I know. She just a few years ago, she was um, the first female police chaplain in Ontario, California in her early 60s, um, was telling me about going up in this helicopter and, uh, you know, police helicopters, they're open on the sides. I mean, so she's just so adventurous and um, always encouraging and inspiring. And so I can remember even as a young girl watching her and she would be up um, speaking to women's groups and she was always very passionate about leadership. So I say it's in my DNA. And I can remember even as a little girl watching her and thinking, I want to be like that someday. And so knowing that she has been that encouragement and inspiration in my life. Now, now ironically, um, she doesn't cook. She doesn't. <laughs> she, she's like, we're lucky she makes coffee. Um, so that piece I didn't get. Um, but definitely the, the strong um, woman and strong leader and very compassionate. In fact, her she says a good modern wife is one who knows her husband's favorite meal in the restaurant that serves it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm all in. <laughs> well, it sounds like, you know, we women and I too, I mean, I had two amazing grandmothers who were incredible in business and they didn't necessarily put out an awning or have a storefront, but they were amazing in terms of what they, I can remember my grandmother, my, my maternal grandmother was 90 years old and I brought her uh, groceries one day, and she, she was a mathematical whiz, although she never pursued that because she was an at-home mother. And she took the groceries out one by one and added them up in her head at 90 and got it correctly. So, mm -hmm. And one of the other things about her was that she had many stories she never told, and we'll never know those stories. And so for women who are watching, I certainly hope that you go and ask your grandparents and your parents about their lives, because one day we were sitting um, for Thanksgiving, arguing over when um, uh, Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic. And all of a sudden, my grandmother is 89 years old, and she said, well, I know when it was exactly, because as I was coming over here on, on my ship, he nearly hit us. He was flying so low. And everybody went, why did you never tell us this before? Mm. And she said, nobody asked. Mm. So, you know, we, what I hear you all saying is that we have women in our lives who have been our models and who have, we are really grateful to those women because many times women don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. They don't have role models. And so seek out those role models because that's part of what our ability to be leaders and business women mm -hmm. and being out there in the community is because we have found some sort of role model. And I had a lot of them in my life as well, not just my grandmother. So. Um, you all have been quoting all over the place mm -hmm. here, but um, I wondered, what um, do you see as the key to happiness? The key to happiness is what? What do you think? I, I think it's, for me, and I can speak for myself, for me the key to happiness is knowing, first of all, that happiness is a choice, and it's something that I choose to be or not to be. Okay. I want to echo that as well. Mm -hmm. I think what you put your attention on is very important. And I think we need to be very careful about the thoughts we let ourselves have. You know, mm -hmm. we, can, we can notice a thought and we can change it mm -hmm. to something that feels better. I also really, you know that Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler? Oh, you better do know I know that one? No one to hold them. No <laughs> one to hold them. <laughs> that one. I think that's really wise advice because if you are holding on to something that's not good for you, it's probably It'll not. Destroy you. Well, you yeah, know the exactly. experience I just recently had over that. I had to know when to fold them and when to walk away, yeah, even exactly. though it was very painful. So, right. uh, and I had to walk away. So, but you're you're right. That's exactly correct. Anyone else? I think the key to happiness is uh, in due part. I think there are so many facets to happiness, but one I think essential key is pursuing your passion. I think it's a very sad life and a sad existence to wake up day after day and do something that doesn't bring you contentment, satisfaction, yep. a sense of value added to what you bring to the table. 
and something that really gets you fired up, something that you get up early to do, yep. stay up late to yep. do, and often do without pay. Yeah. I think that's one of the keys to happiness. Well, you know, that sounds like a lot of people who are living in, you know, to J-O-B, just over broke, mm -hmm. you know, going to work every day and just, you know, um, filling out their time in order to have money to pay for. I often use at, a, at my clients who tell me, and someday I will, or mm -hmm. I'm making money so that one day I will, mm -hmm. and, and don't live. And one day never comes. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You know? And yeah. how many times does that happen? Tomorrow, exactly. Tomorrow, tomorrow, and, and it always. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Too many graves have carried dreams. In them. Exactly. Live what, now. Mm -hmm. What do you know for sure? Is there anything that can you can uh, know for sure? I'm going to heaven. Get <laughs> <laughs> a ticket. There you go. Got a ticket to ride. Ticket to ride. I love it. <laughs> you know, one of the things I it's a quote I heard. You know, what do you know for sure? Well, math is true. Everything else um, is debatable. <laughs> and you know, I. I it's interesting, you know, I, I tell my kids all the time, the older I get, when I was younger, life just seemed to be so much easier because black and white was so clear to me when I was younger. And the older I get, the more gray the world seems because you learn more information and you meet more people and you realize the more you know, the more you don't know. Mm -hmm. The more you know, the more you don't know. And right. so that, that span of what I don't know has gotten so much larger as I've gotten older instead of getting smaller. And you would think just the opposite. I agree. There's not a lot I can know for sure, but I think there's a lot I can know for pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And I think what I know for pretty sure is that what this life is all about ultimately is becoming your true self fully, as fully as you can in this lifetime and learning love. And I think learning and doing and being loving also includes being loving to yourself. Well, I want to kind of jump in on that one as a psychologist because on many times when I have workshops I ask rooms full of people can you define love and everyone has a different definition of love mm -hmm. and some people's definition of love isn't necessarily a positive one because mm -hmm. of the way they were raised mm -hmm. and so you know I think what we're you know striving for in terms of compassion and empathy you know, you ladies have been talking about leadership skills, and I constantly hear what I might call soft skills mm -hmm. all the time being prevalent, mm -hmm. as opposed to hard skills. Like, you can learn to be, you know, an administrator, you can learn, excuse me, you can learn to write a business plan or do marketing or mm -hmm. accounting or all those things. But it's really the soft skills that are really what are important in life. And it seems that our society has dismissed this for so many years as, you know, fluffy, mm, so to right. speak. And now we're getting back to, you know, this feminine side of life, if you will, where, you know, compassion and empathy and all those mm -hmm. things are really important. So, um, you know, what is it about our lifestyle that has created all of this um, stress and, you know, we're not taking time to be quiet and listen to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't have the opportunities to show love. Like, I mean, anybody who has children and works know that you would love to spend all your time loving them, but, you know, you're asking them to pick up after themselves or you're, you know, to do things. And, yeah. you know, after 10 years of marriage, mm -hmm. you and your husband are still arguing with each other. What is it? Jump in yeah, on yeah, that, Daria. yeah. I think that what has happened in our society is that we've become so goal driven mm. in these, like you said, the hard areas, the hard sciences, the check off the box, that tangible, I have it in my hand, I got the degree, I bought the house, I yeah, yeah. started this company. That's wonderful. Nothing's wrong with that. But I think that the emphasis has been too much on checking off the boxes mm -hmm. and not enough on the soft side mm -hmm. of life, the things that truly make us who we are mm -hmm. as human beings, mm -hmm. our, that, that spirit, that essence mm -hmm. that is who we are. Mm -hmm. um, we've become so tangibly driven, materialistically driven to the neglect of these other things that are really what's rich about the human experience. One of the things I enjoy about your Facebook page is watching you, all the pictures I see with you and your daughters all the time and your husband. 
I mean, you obviously, and they're very happy and they look very content. Mm -hmm. So pay them well. (laughs) (laughs) So you obviously do something, you know, to 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 create that kind of, you know, your husband is happy. I see him all the time as well. So what is it that you do, you know? To create that kind of atmosphere, you obviously you're a driven woman. You're right. very successful in business, and yet you have this amazing ability to have this wonderful family as well. The balance of the hard and the soft. Right, I was brought up with it. I'm very close to my parents. My sister's family's close. My brother's family. It was a learned trait that we were brought up in. Just as you could be a, a child of neglect, mm-hmm. we were a child of love, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so it's not very hard to do that so family dinners and vacations and conversations and those long drives in the car and getting to be them and now my girls and i can wear the same shoes unfortunately i can't wear the clothes but we can wear the same shoes or they help me with my makeup tonight or choosing my outfit and it's a team sport it's a team sport and doing that and making decisions together we talk a lot about goals and trips and career changes which mm-hmm. I'm about to have and um, as a family and we enjoy life it's, it's so it's, communication is essential totally here we go we're you know mm-hmm. another soft skill totally mm-hmm. communication mm-hmm. yes Daria I just want to add um, I read an article and I'm not going to know who the author was or where I read it but I, it was about a nurse who um, tended to people who were dying and she throughout the years learned these themes that tended to arise from people who were living the last few days of their life or weeks of their life. And the things that they wished they would have done differently were the soft skills. They weren't, oh, I wish I would have mastered accounting better, Mm -hmm. or I wish I would have learned uh, how to do my job better, or I wish I would have worked more hours. It It was about family. It was about love. It was about being there for the people that are really important, those soft skills. But really, in the end, those are the types of skills that really matter to people. Mm-hmm. And that's transitional, isn't it? I mean, we yes. this goes so full circle back yeah. into the workplace. I mean, we know from Dr. Goldman's research, 80% of your success is built off your emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I was right. gonna, yeah. about to ask yes. you, you have, a, you have a, an authentic leadership, uh, is it a conference? A, a summit, summit every mm-hmm. year um, and in the fall, and so do you teach, you know, these soft skills to in your leadership summits? We do. The Authentic Leadership Summit is centered around, first of all, authenticity. And then we have a sub theme um, that's run each year after that. Um, but it, it is. It's, it's not technical skills. Um, and it is geared towards mid to senior level leaders. And we are focusing on their leadership skills in the soft areas. So whether that is their their authenticity, their self-awareness, their self-management, their social skills, um, their relationship management skills. And we hear all the time, I could use this at home too. Like that was some big aha. Right, right. And we're like, yes, you could. Um, (laughs) There's an idea. Um, And so we always tell people the same challenges that you have at work. If people say you don't listen well, or if, if, you know, I would walk around and lots of people would say, well, they, they just don't communicate or they don't understand me. I can almost guarantee you those are the same things exactly. we're going to hear if we go home or if we go to your friends and we ask those same questions. So those are some of the things that we hit on at the Authentic Leadership Summit. It does happen every fall, and it is the last Monday in September. Um, held at, traditionally, we hold it at the Boar's Head Inn so people can come there. Speaking of being pampered and mm-hmm. relax, um, the, so you can come in the weekend before, and so it's always the last Monday in September. Well, if you'd like to have any information, before I forget, about any woman on this panel, uh, we have on our website, www.whatwisewomenwant.com, and again, wise is spelled with a Z. Each one of these women is featured on our website, and their connections or their contact information and their websites are located there as well. I know it's difficult on these programs to be able to write down all the information uh, from every single person. So you can go to our website again, what wise women want and wise is spelled with a Z dot com. And you can find out about each one of these women, their background or um, any kind of connection you want to make or contact information. You can find it there. So what was the quote that influenced you? Do you have, I mean, I have a lot of them. 
Is there any one or two that you might want to convey to people? What, what's a quote that really influenced your life? Anybody? Well, when it's on the back of all of our business cards, one of my favorite quotes is by Henry Ford, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And I know, Angela, you had said earlier, you know, we've got to take those thoughts captive. Mm -hmm. and, and we do. Our, our thoughts are so powerful. And it's so cool how um, neuroscience and psychology now are coming together to prove these things. And so, you know, what we, what we think we will become. And so I, I, that's definitely one of my favorite quotes. Bevan? Uh, well, a cute one that I have, which my daughter's mm -hmm. twin daughters said to each other is, you can have half when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to your house. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Really, yeah. I was, I'm coming you over for dinner. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. We got a really cute dog to the top yeah. off. So, so funny. Uh, definitely come over to And my after house. meeting her husband, he's you know, he told me he was in the military for, for many years, and I thought, oh, this is gonna be and I thought, wow, this is like so fun. You know? <laughs> Italian, he's in the military. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, do you have um, a favorite quote? It's by Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he said, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years. And I, I feel like that's really how I've chosen to live my life, to make it about having experience, about learning, about soaking in life as much as I can, um, to really make it a rich experience for me. Cynthia? My quote is by someone whose name I do not know. I heard this quote by a young man speaking on a radio show, and he said that his grandfather gave him this advice, and it stuck with me, and I use it in my trainings. And he said, never trade what you really want for what you want right now. Mm. And I think that's profound because the temptation is to go after things that mm -hmm. are easy, that are right in front of you, mm -hmm. um, and you lose sight of what it is that you really want mm -hmm. and go after the temptation of the moment. I think if we can resist those urges, that's another big key to happiness. All right, here's an interesting question. How has being a woman enhanced and strengthened your experience of being alive? Hmm. Wow, well, first of all, I love being a woman. <laughs> I'm very thankful God created me a woman. Um, and I cherish the experience. I think that um, we are carriers and we're not only physiologically created to be carriers of life, but we are also symbolically carriers of dreams. I think we're pregnant with promises and um, that we, we carry these wonderful adventures and hopes for the future inside of us. And we have a very unique ability to bring those to fruition, to give birth and to be midwives like I think that all of my co-panelists and you and I are mm. midwives to help people bring their dreams and hopes to life. Mm. like that. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Daria, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm 32 years old and I know that there are generations of women who fought before me to ensure I have equal rights. But to tell you the truth, I go through my career, my friendships, my life, my adventures, not even really thinking I'm a woman. I mean, I, I love being a woman. I know I am a woman, but it's just not an issue for me. Um, and I know, like I said, that there are plenty of women who have come before me to make my attitude even possible. And I am grateful for their efforts. But I, um, you know, at 32 years old as a, a Gen Wire, um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't really think about being a woman that frequently. Interesting. You can buy us all dinner to think of. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I Evan? think uh, being a woman has opened more doors. I think there's a lot more doors that are, can be open now, especially for, for women versus men, if you kind of did the role playing there. I think that we, since you're a mother and you stay at home possibly, now you've, your husband goes to work, you got the world as your oyster. You can go create a business, start a dance studio, write a blog. You have more opportunities um, as a woman, whereas a man, you know, being a little traditional here, they're pretty much bringing in the bacon mm -hmm. typically. And so they have to have that nine to five, bring the paycheck home. But women seem to have a lot more opportunities. And as you 
we all know there's so many more possibilities with these home-based businesses popping up and and getting so creative with the different businesses. So it's and women tend to jump on that and and they seem to be more excited about it mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. So um, it's the it's open up for women a lot. So I'm glad to do one. Yeah, <laughs> Michelle, how are you? Well, I am definitely very happy to be a woman, too, and to share the relationships that that we're able to share as women. Um, Even just sitting here um, is so meaningful and powerful. But I would think one of the things for me is being able to be in touch with my emotions. I, I work with so many people that when we try to raise the bar of emotional intelligence, just even saying the word emotions almost scares them. Mm. Um, and, and that's different, being aware of your emotions, being in tune with them, being able to feel, but still being in control of those emotions and not having those emotions control you. And I, I love that aspect of my womanhood, of being very aware of all of those feelings that are going on inside of me, but also knowing that I can manage through those. I was going to ask what do we, so with all the technology and everything, do we really need men, but we need to wrap up at this point. So. <laughs> um, we do. But um, <laughs> I'd like to remind people that you're watching What Wise Women Want on Charlottesville's public access television, Comcast Channel 13, and we're here every week Next week, we'll be talking about what are the essential elements of alternative education models. And we'll be discussing democratic schools, Montessori schools, and Waldorf schools. So that should be very interesting. Also, on our website, you'll find that we have fireside chats every month. Um, These are the third Saturdays of the month at City Space, and uh, you can register on our website, www.whatwisewomenwant.com. And they are topics that are related to women. Our November topic is uh, women and money. And uh, we'll be talking about children's toys and creativity in December. So for a 30 second wrap up, let's go around. And anything you'd like to say? A few seconds. Uh, Well, I just want to thank you, Daria, for this opportunity to be here with all of these powerful women and to speak on such an important and relevant subject. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Devin? Um, Reach your dream. You have a dream, go for it. Ask Mm -hmm. everybody you possibly know about that dream. Educate yourself on it and and succeed. Angela? Mm -hmm. I'd say it's it's a powerful tool to just believe in yourself. Excellent. Cynthia? Be authentic. Be happy with who you are and live your own life to the maximum. Let's end with a quote from E.S. Bouton. True wisdom lies in gathering the precious things out of each day as it goes by. Thank you to our panel tonight. Have a good evening. And thank you.